Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about who is the real loser of the browser wars. This is a good question. And the reason I wanted to mention this is because our web browsers are getting weird. Of course, as we talked about in an earlier video this month, we can see that here Chromium is dropping some sync features and I argued that yeah, this, there's a reason behind this. I personally don't think this is a huge deal. However, some people certainly do think it's a big deal. And so we have to stop and consider, are we actually getting to the point where the browser wars are going to be lost? And what does this mean? And under what circumstances, uh, like, like who's the winner? Who's the loser here? I've always said many times that Choosing your browser is like electing your president. There's only one positive to this, and that's that we can run multiple different browsers for separate things, which should be part of your strategy anyway. You should not have just a single browser on your computer. This is a good part of, uh, of an OPSEC. This is a good way to keep certain things in one browser, certain things in the other browser. Of course, as a developer, I use browsers to test different websites and different, uh, different engines and things like that. And of course, as you know, we have a couple of major, uh, a couple of major choices in our web browsers. Of course, we have Chrome, which is the most popular, which to me is a little bit frightening because we're already handing Google so much data, and the fact that they are, they are collecting more and more and more data with every turn. And in my opinion, they're really wanting everybody to be signed in perpetually so they can collect all this data and store it and utilize it. Once again, go have a look at that video called The Selfish Ledger. Very interesting to see. We also have, of course, Firefox, which is starting to irritate more people than not because it's, you know, as some of us have started to call it, Woke Fox. They've been doing a lot of weird things. They've been doing experiments in their browsers. Much safer than Facebook's experiments, I will grant you. But nevertheless, I didn't sign up for this. Why don't you go ahead and have your experimental version and run all the experiments you want. I'm okay with that. I just don't want to be part of it. But some people are becoming distasteful of Firefox, even though still, in my opinion, of your mainstream, mainstream browsers, it's still going to be your best option because it is still highly customizable. The code is still open. We can still see what it's doing, although sometimes it's driving us crazy. Of course, we can always go with, with Edge. Of course, uh, right here it says not supported for Linux. You can actually get the developer's build of Edge. You can experiment with it. Of course, you're replacing the evil juggernaut of Google with the evil juggernaut of Microsoft. You can decide for yourself which one is better or which one is not. Now, I've, of course, talked about some of the other browsers that are available. In my opinion, one of the best browsers available right now in our modern era is going to be LibreWolf. This basically is a modernized Firefox that it mostly is just crippled out of the insanity through policies. As far as the, under, uh, the underhood of the system is concerned, LibreWolf is Firefox. And indeed, that's really what it is. It is Firefox with a lot of your craziness taken out of it. They've blocked out DRM. They've blocked out your uh, geolocation. They've blocked out, I don't think they've blocked notifications, but a lot of the things that I like to do hardening my Firefox, LibreWolf has already done. The only reason I'm not using it as much as I would like to in my production builds, at least, is because I still can't get the app image of it working with OBS, although admittedly, I really haven't spent any time with that. I'm just using my hardened Firefox for that at this point in time, or maybe occasionally Waterfox, which unfortunately, Waterfox has been completely compromised. If you are unaware of that, Waterfox has been purchased by System One. Now, there's a difference between StartPage, which has had an investment with System One, and Waterfox, who was purchased by System One. The difference is, and I've spoken with some people in Start Page about this, the difference is, is that System One has given uh, some money to Start Page to help move the browser along. What they're getting in exchange for this is advertising. That's all it is. So the ads that show up on Start Page, these are part of the System One ad network, which are not according to Start Page, and nobody has been able to suggest otherwise. Those are not linked to any profile information. There is a very deep separation between Start Page and System One, and Start Page is not doing anything with any data that you have. 
Now that is a different case. That's the, they're investing in start page to see start page go up as start page goes up the ad revenue split between start pages funding and system one. They actually get some money for those start page uses. That's an, an okay thing. I don't necessarily mind that with the sole exception that I do think that system one was probably the worst type of company you can go into with an ad revenue uh, share like that because system one is kind of crazy. It is, I kid you not, the worst privacy policy I've ever seen in my life, even including things that say we buy other data from companies to supplement the data we have. Now, the difference is, is that start page is not in system one's platform as far as they don't use that portion of their ads to sell ads based upon the data profiles. That's what I'm trying to get out. Waterfox, on the other hand, is purchased and owned by System 1. I don't trust it at this point in time. The Waterfox I still have on my computer is still an old version. Before that, eventually I am going to have to dump it. And when I do that, then I'll have to just spend the time to get Libra Wolf working with OBS. No big deal, but that might actually resolve itself because that would mean that I actually update my system. So we'll get that guy figured out. Uh, this one just doesn't get as many updates as the other one for production reasons. Now, of course, as I just recently did my web browser video the uh, a couple weeks back, then people were talking to me about other browsers. You should have a look at some of the other ones. So I went ahead and pulled up a few of these other browsers. So one of these is going to be Viper Browser. Viper Browser, we have uh, basically it's just an older version of Chromium with a few modifications. They've added some ad blocking scripts and a few other things. Mostly though, you're basically running a really old ver version of Chromium. And I'm not going to comment. I don't just don't know. Have they fixed the security stuff? They just haven't moved the features ahead. But in my testing and experimenting with Viper browser, it just doesn't work super well. And I've run into that problem on Arch and on Linux Mint utilizing some of these browsers to test them out. I, I, I just get the aw oh, snap. Something went wrong all the time. It's really annoying. It's like, I, I'm sorry, I just cannot work with a browser that just is completely a functional. And I'm not saying Viper browser is completely a functional, but here's the difference as a developer. There's websites you might go on that will work perfectly fine with it. But I actually, some of my clients run things like Shopify. I can't even use my development browser setup, which is customized with de developer tools to use with Spotify or Shopify, excuse me. They're like, we, you have to update your browser. So now I have to use a browser with crippled tools that don't work well on newer systems in order to figure out some Shopify stuff. That's really annoying. And that the point is in that is that many websites are starting to simply not work if you have an older browser. And so while Viper browser is an excellent alternative for some generic web searching, you're going to run into sites that simply will not load or it'll load up quickly and then, ah, oh, snap, it stopped working or it'll load up quickly and then, ah, oh, it just won't, it'll stop working because of, you know, either JavaScripting or something else they have in the backend engine that is not working on the modern web because the modern web keeps moving. We have a Radium browser. Uh, this one here. Well, the current is saying here 2020, um, you know, November 2020, I just installed this with the repo on Linux Mint and I went into the system settings and it showed me it's built on Ubuntu 16.04. Um, it's old, it's out of date. And I found that it gave me just as many off snap errors, site stopped working. So it's again, it's really good and that it's not collecting any data. It's not sending anything back, but a lot of the websites you might try and go and visit, they are just not going to work. And so you have to be aware of that. Now, this is where having multiple browsers are going on. Use these other privacy focused browsers, use Viper, use Iridium. We'll talk about Bassless Browser Nest. Use these guys as part. And when you encounter a site that you have to visit that doesn't work on the site, I'll just go ahead and copy it over and use a normie browser for that one site and harden that down the best you can. Of course, the last one on this list is Basilisk, which again, Basilisk, it is, I believe this is the one that's kind of based on Pale Moon, which is a really, really old Firefox. 
And even as far back as two or three years ago when Firefox Quantum first came out, there was an article, I think it was on How To Geek, saying, hey, don't bother with these alternatives. Just use the Firefox ESR if you don't like Quantum. Of course, now I believe even the Firefox ESR, I think, is Quantum at this point as well. And so, yeah, the web is moving on, and that is the, the sad reality of where we are. As the web starts moving on and we start being pushed to these corners, what's happening is we're being pushed into small areas. We're being pushed to either Chrome. It's unclear what's going to happen in March 15th when the Google APIs die from Chromium. I'm not sure. I personally contend this is a good thing because I like hardening my browsers anyway. But we might see some drop of functionality. We might be forced onto Chrome, Edge, or Firefox. And that is not a world where some of us really want to be on. So while there are a lot of these other different web browsers out there, we're really locked into these ones. We're locked into Google, we're locked into Microsoft, or we're locked into, uh, into Firefox. Of course, I didn't mention Vivaldi on here. Um, we'll see what happens with Vivaldi. That might be your best option. Although for the people who are hardcore FOSS, it's not an entirely FOSS browser. I'm not super duper hardcore FOSS. I'm FOSS preferred, but I don't, you know, if there's some application that that I do need to work that's that's uh, not FOSS, hey, I'll go with that, although I find alternatives when I can. So this brings us to the final question. You've been asking yourself, who is the real loser in the web browser wars? Well, the real loser in the web browser wars is us, the users. Because while these forks keep showing up to fork the different browsers of different areas and focus on the privacy and focus on, on the security elements, the web is still moving on and these forks just stop working on a lot of modern sites if we happen to be needing to visit those modern sites. And so as we are moving on, we are the real losers here in that we are going to be forced to web browsers we don't like, we don't agree with, because the web will not work in any other way. And that in and of itself is a problematic and a fundamentally uh, you know, a fundamentally problematic thing. Let's just go ahead and leave it at that. So ultimately, the point here that I want to make is, yeah, we are the losers. We are losing in that we have put too much stock in Chromium. We have put too much stock in Firefox. Um, what else is there? Uh, we can, I guess, switch to Mac. Somebody did correct me and say, yeah, Safari actually has a really high use case. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'll tell you, though, that when I go and work on somebody's Mac who's not a computer savvy person, they're running Chrome. When I go and work on a Mac, somebody's Mac that is a computer savvy person, they're using Chrome. In my experience, a lot more people are using Chrome than Safari on Mac. But that's really your your three engines, Firefox, Chromium, and uh, Safari. What, what's that one? Is that called WebKit, I think? I forget. That's it. We don't have any other options. And as these guys continue to go down their rabbit hole, we the users of the web are the ones losing out. What are our solutions? As I said in this video, OPSEC, have multiple browsers. Use these other ones that may not work as well on every site that we can. And if a site that you need to visit doesn't work, ask yourself, do I really need that site to work? If I do, by all means, use Firefox, use Chrome, use Edge, whatever you need to do to get your work done and then close out that browser, set it to clear all history, all cookies and whatever else, maybe use a VPN to protect any data on that particular browser. That's an option with ExpressVPN, one of my affiliates. You can actually separate some of your data traffic through the VPN and some of it not. That would be a good strategy to use. So I'll leave a, go ahead and leave a link for ExpressVPN down in the description. You can get up to five connections and uh, you can even put that on an individual router as well. And I believe at this time you can get one year of access for $100. So go check out, take a look at ExpressVPN should that be a thing you need to do. So uh, with all that, let's go ahead and leave this video here. We are the losers and we have to push back wherever we possibly can. Then this case, that means using these other browsers for almost all aspects, switch to the main ones only when you need to. So there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. 
you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.